What's up, guys? Hi, I flew in from Hawaii this morning. Stoked to be here. Um, today, I just want to talk about some ideas we have for improving and augment, augmenting the Celestia protocol uh, using ZK technology. So quick summary, I'll talk a bit about the background of Celestia that's relevant to understand some of these improvements, and then I'll go into each one of them. And there, I'm only highlighting three. There are actually more. Uh, and there are lots of different ways we want to improve Celestia, so um, don't think that this is the only things we're thinking about. Um, so first of all, what is Celestia? The origin of Celestia is this white paper, Lazy Ledger, uh, published in 2019 by one of our co-founders, Mustafa. And in that, he described this goal to build a minimal, modular, and scalable data availability layer. So what that means is when we say minimal, we want it to be minimal amount of overhead to verify. So you shouldn't need much bandwidth, you shouldn't need much state or storage, and you shouldn't need much like uh, execution to verify the chain. And the, the end goal is really that everyone with a smartphone should be able to verify the Celestia blockchain because that's how we reach maximum decentralization. Um, modularity, it comes to this uh, idea that actually you can separate execution from consensus and data availability. So Celestia, rather than uh, you know, verifying that transactions in a given block are valid, just verifies that the transactions are available. And then finally, the, the piece on scalability is that, um, actually in 2018, Mustafa wrote this paper about data availability sampling, which is the first proposal for how you can build a blockchain that where the block size and the throughput scales with the number of nodes in the network. And so that is what, to me, scaling, like that's the definition of scaling, is that you can have bigger and bigger block sizes with more and more participation. Like a standard monolithic chain has a fixed block size, and once you reach that limit, you can't go any further. Um, some relevant details of how Celestia works for those of you who might not be familiar. Um, Data availability sampling requires that you build your block in a very uh, specific way. So you have to uh, take the original transaction data and you divide it into these chunks. And then you extend these chunks using Reed-Solomon erasure coding into this extended block. And then uh, nodes that are sampling choose randomly uh, among that block. And each time they sample successfully, they have a higher confidence that the whole block data is available. And specifically, um, the block data is also merkleized in a special way. So each row and column of this 2D uh, square is merkleized into row and column roots, and then those are merkleized into this um, top-level data root. So if you're a, if you're a roll-up and you're trying to prove to a client that the data that you published has actually been published, if they have sampled the Celestia block, all you have to show them is that your data was included somewhere within the data root. So that's all the background that you need to know about Celestia. And we can move into the more interesting stuff. What's really exciting is that most of the work uh, is done. So we've built out data availability sampling. We have block reconstruction. We have BFPs, bad encoding fraud proofs which I'll share more about later. We have a namespace Merkle tree, which enables people to query data according to like specific applications. And we've tested this now on uh, the block space race with you know, over a 1,000 light nodes and, and lots of things. But even though we're shipping, Celestia is not done. This is just V1. This is just the start. And really, there's a lot of improvements that we have in the works and ideas that we, we want to build to make Celestia even better. So that's what this talk is really about. So a quick note, like I know very, very little <laughs> about ZK. Um, basically, my mental model is what you see on the right, which is like, I understand that you can generate the proof with a public input and a witness, and then I know you can verify it <laughs> with the proof and the public input. That's pretty much my mental model. There's people in this audience who know a lot more than me. Um, and so that's just a disclaimer. Um, so if you came to this talk hoping that like, you'd learn something interesting about ZK, sorry, this is not, not a talk for you. Um, so the first improvement that I think would be very, very interesting is 
proving the correctness of the encoding of the Celestia block data. So the, the current way that Celestia works is that um, a block producer uh, can in, like makes the extended block, they construct the block, but they could do it in a malicious way that actually doesn't follow proper encoding. And so you couldn't actually reconstruct the block if you wanted to. And so to solve this problem, we have uh, what we call a bad encoding fraud proof. So if a full node in Celestia sees that this is happening, they will generate this fraud proof and circulate it to light nodes, and they'll know not to trust that block. The, the downside of this approach uh, is that even though it's trust minimized, you have the same sort of latency as like uh, you know an optimistic rollup. So you have to wait for this fraud proof window to elapse before you can consider a block final. So a lot of people complain about this. I think I think it's it's true. Like this latency is not really desirable. So an alternative solution, and that you see in protocols like Ethereum with dank sharding, also at Veil, is to use KZG commitments to uh, encode, uh, encode and extend the block data. And what's nice about that is you get correctness out of the box. So you don't have to, there's no fraud proof. Like you get the commitments and you know that they're valid. Um, the downside is that at least in our research and sort of like going deeper into KZG, we realize that it's not really practical at this stage to use because they're very expensive and slow. Uh, the KZG commitments are very expensive and slow to compute. So at least for now, it doesn't seem like it's ready for prime time. Um, and so a potential solution that we're thinking about is actually to, to stick with read Solomon uh, encoding, but then actually add this layer of ZK proving on top. So essentially, um, what you'll do is you'll extend the block data in the normal way, um, but in parallel, you'll also generate a ZK proof that, you know, given this original ta transaction data, if you do the read Solomon encoding and then the Merkleization, you get this specific data root. So you can kind of prove the correctness of the code. And so um, what's cool about this is that you could still kind of like, you could it's kind of like an optimistic roll up with a ZK finality. So you could have, uh, you know, block, produce a block normally and then rather than waiting for the entire fraud proof window, you get this ZK proof that the encoding is correct. So you don't have to wait that whole time. Um, so one of the questions is like, is this actually better than KCGs? Is it, will it be cheaper? Will it actually be faster? I think there's a possibility that it will be. And um, also what, what proving system is best to use. So we've, we've talked a lot with the Viz Zero team, for example, who know a lot about Starks. And it seems like there also could be this cool uh, overlap because Starks rely on a lot of like Reed Solomon uh, math to prove uh, their, their validity. So there could be some kind of cool overlap there. A second really cool improvement that we're um, discussing is um, building a ZK friendly data route. So um, as I mentioned earlier, when you want to prove that um, you know you, the data you publish is actually included in Celestia and, and is available, you need to like, you know, give show people that it's included uh, in the the root, the data root. The problem is that a lot of zk rollups want to do that um, in circuit, and the issue is that we build our data root using SHA-256, and that's a very expensive operation to prove inside of a zk circuit, and so it's kind of like a really bad, potentially bad user experience for ZK rollups. A naive solution is you could construct two data routes. So you could have the normal SHA-256 one, and then you could use like Peterson or Poseidon hashes to build a ZK friendly version of the data route. But the problem there is that once, we, once you have two data routes that are separate, you have to sample over both of them. And so you're kind of like fragmenting the network, either increasing the amount of um, work that a node needs to do to verify it, or you're kind of fragmenting the security. So that doesn't really work, unfortunately. But the, the ZK-inspired solution is that actually you could build, um, so you, you use the normal Celestia Shaft 256 data route, and then and you sample over that one, and then in parallel, you build a uh, ZK-friendly data route using something like Poseidon or Peterson, 
and then but you prove you you generate a zk proof that if you take the same block data and you merkleize it like th those two roots are basically committing to the same block data so they're they're equivalent so now as a zk rollup i can actually uh, prove to you that the, the the data that i'm committing to was included in the zk friendly root and then you just verify that the zk friendly root is equivalent to the data root that you sampled, like the normal Celestia data root. So this would solve that problem. Um, the question, some of the questions are like, which proving system would be most cost effective? Like, as, as we said, like, you know, doing SHA-256 in the ZK circuit is really expensive. It's like building, you know, these, these uh, data routes will be very, very expensive. Um, so this will be like a costly thing to do and also, how will this be funded? Like, how do you share this cost amongst all the different ZK rollups that might use this service? And I think there are some really cool ideas around, um, so sort of like proving networks, proving services that, that could be helpful there. And I want to give a shout out to Mina and Risk Zero also for uh, sharing feedback on this idea. Um, and last but not least, a third idea of how to uh, improve Celestia is some is a feature that a lot of people like this, I would see this as like the number one, or mo one of the most common complaints I get from people about like Celestia's design is that we don't have a way to support a uh, trust minimized bridge natively in the protocol. Because Celestia is so minimal, there is, there's no smart contracts, there's like basically no execution on chain. That means you can't verify, uh, you can't run a verifying bridge, basically. And so, um, this is kind of a shame because one of the big uh, selling points of rollups is that you can have trust minimized bridges. Um, but if Celestia has to rely on things like Axelar or Hyperlane or I don't know, all, like uh, different kinds of so like trusted bridges to get uh, the Celestia token up to the rollups, it kind of no, it just doesn't quite feel right. Um, and so, a naive solution. Uh, shout out to John, is uh, to just enshrine a, a specific rollup into the Celestia protocol. And um, then you could bridge the TIA into that rollup, and that rollup can bridge into all like the rest of the ecosystem, essentially. Um, the downsides there actually aren't that many. Like you, if you design this in the right way, you know, it could uh, be very, very minimal, potentially. but it could, could have some complexity or like undesirable amount of state or execution you need to support. But, it, but the, the really big one is, is basically that it really compromises credible neutrality in our mind. And that's another big, I would say, value and design goal of Celestia is to be credibly neutral. So um, what that means is we want to make sure that we're not favoring any specific protocol. Uh, outside, like we're just a, a data availability layer and that's it. We don't want to start delving into, oh, we want to do settlement. Oh, we want to start like launching our rollups. We, we want to be just a data availability layer. And so, if you if you enshrine a settlement layer, if you enshrine this bridge, you start to compromise on that. So, uh, a few days ago, Mustafa posted this um, uh, idea on our forum, which is how can we we can solve this problem in a really minimal overhead way uh, using zk rollups, basically. So. The idea is that uh, at the Celestia level, we create a new transaction type where uh, the verification key of a ZK program is like the address. So you could send funds to that address. And then if you want to spend funds from that address, you have to provide it a valid proof. And that proof would basically be a, like, would, would show that, so like, that there would be a, a ZK rollup associated with this address, and your proof would say, on the ZK rollup, I made a valid withdrawal transaction with this ID, and uh, at this block height is still unspent, and so let me spend this many funds out of the um, out of this address. So, <clears throat> how this would work in practice is that you know, for example, you would just send a deposit transaction of TIA to this wallet that is associated with this 
uh, verification key. And then the rollup would see that and credit you Celestia tokens on the rollup. From there, you can bridge wherever you want. Um, and then when you want to go bridge back down to Celestia, you send a withdrawal transaction on the ZK rollup. Maybe it's a burn or, or I don't know, whatever it is. And then you prove, you, you generate a proof that you, you did that and you show that to Celestia and that allows you, gives you the right to basically transfer funds from the rollup address back to your address on Celestia. Um, the, the beauty of this is that it, it's extremely minimal. Um, it could potentially be stateless. Um, and it's also credibly neutral. So we're not enshrining anything. We're just adding a new functionality to the Celestia protocol. Some, there, there are some open questions. So like one of the big ones is, which proof system should we support? Uh, some people think it should be like Groth, um, because it seems like, uh, sorry, Ethereum is moving in that direction. And in some ways, some people made the argument that like choosing a proof, proving system will be sort of like uh, not credibly neutral. But we, the way we think about this is that hopefully um, using recursion, you could prove, like, let's say you're using, your ZK rollup or whatever uses a different like proving system. You could prove your ZK rollup within whatever proving system Celestia uh, natively supports. So hopefully that's not a problem. And also at the end of the day, like every blockchain, for example, chooses a specific, you know, way of uh, like like signature scheme, for example, and like that's kind of inherent to adding this kind of functionality. And another question is like, should we include a state commitment corresponding to this verification address? Because that could make things a lot easier for the implementation. Although it does add a slight amount of state to each one of these addresses. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Sovereign Labs and Succinct for feedback on this idea. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. I just have a few other ideas like that I want to throw out there for ways that we want to improve Celestia going forward. One is we want to increase censorship resistance. So ideas like multiplicity from duality come to mind there because I think the data availability layer should be as censorship resistant as possible uh, if it's going to fulfill its role well. And also adding like kind of in protocol MVV support like protocol and building from Skip is also a really interesting idea that we can um, I think would be a great improvement to Celestia and adding restaking support for Celestia would be really cool. Then we could, for example, launch um, shared sequencer networks that are, are partially secured by the Celestia token. Um, and those are just a handful of things. There's, there's also another ZK idea, which is the quantum gravity bridge, generating like a, a ZK version of that so it's very easy to verify. Um, so anyway, uh, I just want to reiterate that Celestia is never done. And I think that um, you know these are just a few of the improvements we have on top of my mind. I didn't mention a lot of things around scalability and networking and, and like the core protocol. Um, but ultimately, our, our vision is so ambitious that I think it's going to be um, an ongoing effort of research and implementation to um, like be the best, most minimal, modular, scalable DA layer. And we're always grateful for new ideas. So those of you who are listening, if you have other ideas of how we can improve the protocol, or you have ideas how we can solve these problems, I would love to hear from you, and you always welcome new contributors. So, thank you very much. And this is this is a link to the forum, and that's my my Twitter. I would love to talk to you guys. So.